To determine the direction, if any, of the induced current in these loops, we must first understand that this current carrying wire is producing a magnetic field, and the direction of that magnetic field is also important. To determine the direction, we grasp the wire with the right hand, as indicated in this figure right here, and we make sure that our thumb is pointing in the direction of the current. We can see that our four fingers naturally would curl in a counterclockwise direction, so that means that the magnetic field is also going in a counterclockwise direction. Now, in this picture, if we grab the wire and our fingers curl in a counterclockwise direction, that would mean that on the left side of the wire, our fingers would be pointing out of the page. So we would have magnetic field lines that are pointing out of the page in this manner here. So we'll draw a few dots to indicate out of the page. Now, as we move away from the wire, the strength of the magnetic field diminishes. So we would still have these dots indicating the magnetic field direction, but they would be getting smaller. So we can draw a smaller set of dots as we move farther away from the wire, and then still smaller here. So hopefully that indicates to us that the magnetic field strength is diminishing. On the other side of the wire, of course, our fingers would be curling into the page, and so the magnetic field also would be pointing into the page. So we'll draw X's on this side to indicate the direction of the magnetic field pointing into the page. And again, we'll diminish the size of the X's to show that the magnetic field strength is also diminishing. Let's take a look next at loop A. We can see loop A is sliding upward. Notice that as loop A slides upward, the magnetic field that's traversing or passing through that loop would not be changing because whatever the strength of the magnetic field is along this line right here wouldn't change as the loop slides upward. So that's important to understand because in order for there to be a current, there would have to be an induced voltage. The induced voltage, in turn, depends on the change in flux. Well, magnetic flux can only change if the magnetic field changes, the area changes, or the angle between the loop's normal line and the magnetic field lines changes. Now, the area of this loop certainly will not change, because as the loop moves upward, it's still the same loop, so that's not going to change. As for the angle, if we consider briefly here the loop with the magnetic field pointing into the loop, there is a so-called normal line, and it's a line that passes through the center of the loop. If you can imagine passing a line straight through the center, then that would be the normal line. We'll indicate the normal line in this exercise with an orange color. So the normal line would also be passing into the computer screen, so we can draw a dot to represent that. Notice the angle between the normal and the magnetic field is zero, and it's going to maintain zero degrees throughout the course of the loop sliding upward. So in short, the angle is not changing. The only thing that could change would be the magnetic field, but as we noted for loop A, that change in magnetic field is zero as it slides upward. So if the, all these values down here are zero, that means the change in flux is zero. That means the induced EMF is zero. And therefore, since the induced EMF is zero, then for loop A, there would be no induced current. So that would be the correct answer for part A, is that there is no current. Next, let's take a look at loop B. We can see loop B is sliding to the left, and as it does so, the strength of the magnetic field is diminishing. So let's talk about that down here. Here is loop B. We have a magnetic field that is pointing into the page, but as it slides to the left, the magnetic field strength is decreasing. That means there will be a magnetic flux, and therefore there will be an induced current. We just have to figure out the direction of that induced current. Now, in order to predict the direction of the current, we must obey Lenz's law, which states that the current from the induced EMF, which is what we're trying to predict, will create a magnetic field with flux opposing the change in flux through a circuit. Now, let's walk through this again. Remember, the magnetic field is decreasing and it's directed out of the page. This is for loop B. We need to therefore create a magnetic flux that is increasing out of the page. That will obey Lenz's law. So we have to make sure we get a magnetic flux that is increasing out of the page. 
To do that, we would need to induce a magnetic field pointing out of the page again. So we can use a different color here for the induced field, and we can see that we're going to make the direction out of the page. Now we go back to the right hand rule. We have to grasp the wire with our right hand so that our fingers will be pointing out of the page. So let's make an attempt at doing that. Okay, so there is a mangled right hand grasping the loop here, and we can see that the thumb, as we grasp the right hand side of the loop, the thumb would be naturally pointing in this direction. Remember, your fingers would be gripping the loop so that they're pointing out of the page or out of the computer screen. The thumb points in the direction of the current. So finally, we can see that the induced current would be counterclockwise in loop B. So that's going to be the correct answer for part B of the question. The induced current is counterclockwise. Let's take a look at loop C. Now remember loop C was moving to the right and also remember these magnetic fields were pointing into the page. So these green X's show a magnetic field pointing into the page. As loop C is dragged to the right, the magnetic field is decreasing. So we have a decreasing magnetic field. That means the magnetic flux is also decreasing, but this time it's decreasing into the page. Therefore, the induced magnetic flux, according to Lenz's law, must be directed into the page. That way it will oppose the decrease of the applied magnetic field. So the induced magnetic field is basically also going to be into the page to oppose the decrease that's going on into the page. So now we need to have our fingers as we grip the wire pointing into the page. So here we go again, we're going to draw a right hand grasping the wire so the four fingers are pointing into the page. There it is again, the infamous right hand. I've indicated the back of the hand with the word back here to hopefully make sure you know how this picture is supposed to look. As we grip this side of the wire with our right hand, making sure that our four fingers are pointing into the page, we can see that our thumb naturally points in this direction here. Now this is actually a clockwise direction, so this means that the induced current in loop C will be clockwise. And that is indeed the correct answer for part C.